solitary tree is a simple and quick little project and will help to get you comfortable moving the hoop. Notice that I have already fused the moon to the background fabric and I use the moon to position the drawn stabilizer on top. Also notice the underlay on the trunk which is where we're going to start. Okay, the first thing we're going to work on today is we're going to underlay the trunk. Now I've already gone ahead and I've pulled up my thread from the bottom and I've tacked a few stitches. Now, you'll also notice to, in most of the projects that I'm going to be doing today that I'm going to be doing them on a neutral background. If I had done this on the background uh, on a piece of batik, you wouldn't be able to see the lines as well. And that's one reason that I've gone to a more neutral background. But what I'm doing right now is an underlay stitch. An underlay stitch is nothing more than another means of stabilization. It's, helped, it's going to help keep the distortion from appearing around the edge of the design. Now I use a straight stitch and I'm moving the hoop very, very slowly. And I'm just going to go back and I'm just bumping each one of these lines. Now an underlay stitch does not need to be pretty. It just needs to get the job done because every one of these lines are going to be covered up. You want each of the lines to be about an eighth of an inch apart. On this particular little project, what you're going to do is you're going to underlay up to the first V and then you're going to stop. It's not going to be necessary to be able to do the smaller ones simply because there's not going to be enough stitches in any one of those that distortion would be an issue. So that's sort of what your underlay stitch is going to look like. Now I'm going to stitch back, I'm going to go over to a zigzag stitch. Now remember from one of our earlier videos, it said when you were using the zigzag stitch, the line that you're thread painting, which in this instance right here is going to be this line that's inside my presser foot, that line must be parallel to me in order for me to fill anything in using a zigzag stitch. So I have this line parallel to me. Now when I get down here to the root, I've got a curve. And I need to be able to make that curve. So what I'm going to do is stop and rotate the hoop, stop, rotate the hoop. Now when I get down here, I'm keeping that line parallel to me. I'm going to go back and forth while I'm down here and I'm going to fill in this little root while I'm here. Come back up here to the curve, stop, rotate. Now as you get better at this, you will be able to just rotate this just like this and you won't have to stop each time. But when you first start, you may have to stop a little bit in order to make that curve. Now, on a tree, these lines would normally come straight down to the bottom of the root, just like that. So what happens is I have, I'm going to turn, well, it's kind of hard to see here. What I have is I have this curve going this way, and I have this straight going straight up and down. And I need to be able to blend these two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to sort of rock this back and forth just like this. Just like if you were pushing somebody in a swing. Just rock it back and forth and sort of rotate the hoop a little bit as you get over closer to the straight line. And what that will do is that will blend the straight coming straight up and down here to the curve. Now I'm going to go back in here in a few minutes with a straight stitch and I'm going to fill in a few holes that are in there. Once I've done this side, I'm going to just stitch over here to the other side and I'm going to repeat this same process over here coming down this side as well. Now since this is exactly the same on both sides, I'm not going to uh, do this other side because I want to show you something else first. When I, get, when I have all this, and let's pretend like I have this whole thing filled in, I'm going to have some holes in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a straight stitch and I'm going to move my hoop north to south. And when I'm moving the hoop north to south, what I'm doing now is I'm going back in and I'm filling in any little holes that I see. And if you hear that knocking sound, that's perfectly all right. That just tells me that there's a lot of thread in one area. So I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to use this straight stitch right down here to kind of clean up this edge to make sure it looks exactly like I want it to look. So what you're going to do is you'll finish the entire trunk, both sides, and then while you have your straight stitch in here, you're going to come up here and you want to do all these tiny little limbs up here. And it's way easier to do these limbs with a straight stitch. Turn your hoop however you see the best, 
and you're going to come out and just go back and go down and go back. And I will say probably the hardest thing you'll have to do is to go back out over the line you just did. But don't worry about it. You'll get the hang of it. It won't take long to be able to do that. Now, when you wash this design away, can you see all the little the black lines that are in here? Let's assume that I missed my mark and I make this line right here. I made a crooked line out. I want to follow the crooked line back. Don't try to fix it up, just follow it back. And then I'll just come up through here. We can always add more branches if we want. Because remember this line that we're doing, using right there, is going to be covered up. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll go on and you'll complete the rest of this trunk. You're going to finish filling in down through here. And then you'll come up and finish all the little branches up here at the top. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to re-hoop in order to get this very, very last little section up here. Once you have all of the dark brown color in there, we're going to highlight. And you'll probably wonder, well, why in the world is she using all these ugly colors today? Well, I'm using these ugly colors today because it makes it easier on the camera for you to see. So what I'm going to do is I pull my threads to the top and I'm going to cut. Get these out of the way. Now, I've got a straight stitch in here so I can see what I'm doing. Now, what I want to do is, first of all, I want to figure out where is my sun coming from. And in this instance, my sun is coming from this direction right here. So the lightest part of the tree is going to be on this side. Now, your stitches are going to look a whole lot better than mine because you're going to be in the same color family or at least something similar. Uh, mine are so far apart in value that they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. But what you want to do is just highlight this however you want, as much as you want. And the degree of highlight that you use in there is going to depend on the difference in value between the two threads that, that you use. So let's come down through here and let's put a little bit down in through here. Here again, don't worry about that knocking that you hear. That's going to happen all the time. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go, okay, that looks pretty good. That's about all that I need to do. Now, we have this one complete and we're going to go on to our next little video and that's going to be first flowers.